So today, we're going to dive into something really interesting, a new proposal for Bitcoin called BRC100. Now, a BRC is just a fancy term for a Bitcoin request for comment. It's basically a proposed new standard. But this one, this one's making a pretty huge claim that it could actually rebuild the very foundation of the internet and fix some of its biggest, most annoying problems. Let's see if they can back that up. But before we get into the nuts and bolts, let's just ask a question that I think we've all felt at some point. Why, after all this time, does using crypto and digital assets still feel so complicated and honestly a little bit terrifying? It's a massive barrier for, well, pretty much everyone. I mean, you know the drill, right? There's that constant nagging fear of hackers, that stomach-dropping thought that if you lose your keys, your money is just poof, gone forever. And on top of all that, the user experience is often a total mess, making you juggle dozens of different apps and passwords. It's just a recipe for anxiety. Okay, so what's the fix? Well, the folks behind BRC100 are arguing that we've been trying to solve the wrong problem this whole time. The issue isn't about building a stronger lock for your digital front door. No, the problem is the entire door frame is rotten. We're talking about a fundamental architectural problem. And that brings us to the big kind of radical idea at the heart of all this. It's a real paradigm shift. What if, what if your wallet, the very thing that holds your keys, your identity, your money, what if it didn't live inside every single app you use? So the way they're proposing to solve this is to stop thinking about your wallet as just another app. Instead, you need to think of it as something way more foundational, kind of like an operating system, but for your money and your data. And this whole thing is built on a really powerful idea from computer science called separation of concerns. Now, separation of concerns sounds super techy, but the idea is actually pretty simple. You take a really complex system and you break it up into different parts. Each part does one specific thing, and it does that one thing really, really well. This means app developers can focus on what they do best, creating amazing experiences, without also having to be world-class cryptography experts. And this chart right here just lays it all out so clearly. The old way, the way we do things now, everything is a jumbled mess. Your wallet, your identity, your data, it's all tangled together and trapped inside each app. But in this new model, the wallet becomes this secure base layer, you know, like your computer's operating system. And applications, they just plug right into it. And the best part is you, the user, finally get to be in control of your own data. And get this, this operating system thing it's not just a cute analogy they came up with. The creators of this system literally called their core technology the kernel. Now, for anyone who knows computers, the kernel is the absolute heart of an operating system. It manages everything. So that just shows you how deep this vision really goes. So you're probably wondering, how on earth is this even possible? How can one single wallet securely talk to a million different apps? Well, the answer lies in some seriously clever cryptographic magic that lets you create an endless number of keys, all from one single master key that you keep safe. Okay, it basically boils down to three simple steps. First, your wallet and an app exchange public keys. Totally safe to do. Then, using some very cool math, they both independently figure out the exact same shared secret number, a number that no one else in the world could possibly guess. And finally, they use that shared secret to generate a whole new batch of keys and addresses that are completely unique to you and that one app. And here's the absolute game changer in all this. You only have one master private key that you need to protect. Just one. But from that single key, you can safely create a never-ending supply of secure addresses for every single website, app, or service you ever use. And, I mean, when we say endless, we're not kidding. We're talking about a practically infinite number of unique, secure keys. That's how powerful this approach is. So this really clever key system is the engine, right? But what kind of car is it powering? Well, this whole architecture isn't just about making payments a little bit easier. It's about building a whole new internet. They call it the metanet, a web where data and value aren't separate things anymore. They're one and the same. Now, this next part requires a little bit of a mental shift. We're used to thinking of Bitcoin's transaction outputs, the UTXOs, which are kind of like the leftover change from a transaction, as just money. But what if we started thinking of them as something else? What if we saw them as a kind of universal shared memory bank for the whole internet? Okay, there's this fantastic analogy that makes this whole thing click. Picture this. You are a squirrel. 
And all your data, all your digital assets, those are your acorns. The blockchain is the entire park. Now, using that cool key magic we just talked about, you can hide your acorns in millions of different spots all over the park, in locations that only you and the apps you trust know how to find. Your data is perfectly safe, but it's also right there when you need it. And that leads to this really powerful way of thinking about it. You know how the protocol HTTP was the foundation for the web of information that we all use every day? Well, the vision here is that BRC100 could be the foundational protocol for a whole new web, a meta net of value, where everything from your online identity to a single like on a post can be truly owned and transacted. So let's bring this all back down to earth. What does this grand vision actually mean for you? How does this make your digital life any better? Well, it all comes down to a really cool concept the creators call time to first magic. So the payoff, the promise here is actually huge. We're talking one single identity for every app, which means you can say goodbye to all those forgot password emails. We're talking about true data ownership, where your stuff isn't locked away in some corporate server. It belongs to you and it goes where you go. Micropayments could become seamless, letting you pay a few cents for an article with a single click. And you get to decide on a case-by-case -case basis exactly what information each app gets to see, which is a massive boost for privacy. Time to first magic is just the amount of time it takes for a new user to have that wow moment. That instant where you realize this technology lets you do something that was literally impossible before. Maybe it's tipping a musician five cents for a song with zero friction, no sign up required. Or maybe it's logging into a brand new service instantly because your identity is already there with you. That feeling, that's the magic. So that's what I wanna leave you with. In a future internet that's actually built on these ideas of real ownership, privacy, and value, what would that magic moment look like for you? What's the very first thing you would want to do that you just can't do today? Thanks for tuning in.